Hello Travelers people, Enrico here. In this video I want to talk about Lambda functions and more specifically I want to explain five different ways to reduce the execution time of your Lambda functions. This will help you both to have quicker functions and to reduce your AWS build. To start with, let's try to understand how the AWS Lambda pricing works. So you are charged for execution time and memory allocation. The duration cost changes based on the memory location that you use on your Lambda function. So if you allocate more memory, it becomes more expensive. You also charge for number of requests of your Lambda function. Usually it's like 1 million granularity. So for 1 million requests, you are charged 20 cents of dollars. There's also more complicated use cases for the pricing, especially if you're using additional features such as the provision concurrency of Lambda function or Lambda Edge, which is going to add a CloudFront cost. As you may be aware from last year during the reInvent, Lambda function changed the granularity of the cost and it went from the 100 millisecond granularity to 1 millisecond granularity. So basically now you are charged by the millisecond and not more by the 100 millisecond granularity, which gives you a huge difference on how on how much your Lambda functions cost. So it's clear now that if we reduce the ex execution time of a Lambda function, we're gonna also save money. So let's get started and see five methods on how you can reduce your execution time of Lambda function. We can leverage the execution context of your Lambda function and actually reuse it in order to avoid reinitialization of variables or objects. This is especially important when we use like external services or connections to databases. As we know, connection to databases are very expensive in terms of uh, time. So it can really slow down our Lambda functions. The idea here is to be able to reuse the execution context and have like static constructor global variables or singletons. Let's stop for a second now and answer the following question. What is the execution context of a Lambda function? The Lambda service invokes your function in an execution environment, which is an isolated runtime environment. The execution context is a temporary runtime environment that initializes any external dependencies of your Lambda code. As your Lambda function can be invoked numerous times and it scales automatically, the execution context is maintained for some time in anticipation of another Lambda function invocations. What happens is that the Lambda function can reuse the context from another Lambda function execution in order to save time on your function. Let's see now an example of how we can reuse this context execution with a MySQL connection. As you can see here, I have two ways of initializing the uh, MySQL connection into a Lambda function. The first one is optimized to reuse the context because what's going to happen here is that if the client is null, it's going to create the connection to the MySQL database. If the client variable is already defined, which means the Lambda function in reusing the context is going to just avoid the first block of the code and it's going to go directly and query the database without needing to create the connection. On the other hand, the other call block is basically creating a connection for each execution. And the big difference, as you can notice, is that we create the connection outside the handler of our Lambda function. This is because, again, we want to reuse the execution context of our Lambda function and improve the execution time. So remember, every time you have a um, connection to a database, you can use this method. So initialize the variable outside the Lambda function handler in order to be able to reuse the context. Right, the second one is to optimize the external network calls your function uses. So it's very typical from a Lambda function use case to uh, use third party services such as like API calls to third party services. The execution time of the third party API, of course, is gonna sum to the execution time of your Lambda function. So basically, you're paying for the execution time of your Lambda function plus the time that takes to the third party service to get back to you with the data. Therefore, if we have optimized our Lambda function code, how can we actually improve the calls to the third party services? For example, if you're using like connection to databases or simple API calls, you can enable the TCP keep alive value in order to reuse connection and to reuse HTTP connection as well. In addition to this, when possible, we can try to call APIs and resources in the same region as the Lambda function we are using. 
So if our lambda function is e in u was 2, we will try to call resources in the same region. One quick way to do that is, especially if you use uh, DynamoDB as a database, use DynamoDB global tables, we basically replicate the tables in each of the region of uh, AWS. One last thing when you use uh, network calls is to make sure that you, that you only retrieve resources that are needed to that Lambda function. And what I meant by this is that, uh, especially when you query databases or when you query like an S3 bucket, you can use the S3 select feature, which basically lets you query the S3 bucket using a SQL um, syntax and only, and use like filters as you will do in a SQL query and be sure to only query the resources that are needed in that Lambda function. This will reduce both the data transferred into the Lambda function and also the execution time. Okay, the next one is optimize the deployment package of your Lambda function. So this one is not more about the code of your Lambda function, but it's more about the deployment package and the deployment size of your Lambda function. The idea here is to reduce the size of the deployment package because it's going to reduce the time to spin up the Lambda function and to reuse the code as well. So there are two ways to do that. Once you have finished with your uh, Lambda function code, be sure to have included in your packages on only the libraries that you use. Meaning that if you realize that some of the libraries were just needed when you were developing the Lambda function, you can just delete them from the package JSON. The second suggestion is that remember that Lambda has already some packages pre-installed into the, into the deployment environment. So the classic one is the AWS SDK package, which is actually quite a huge package. It's like a 60 megabyte size. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to leave the list of already installed packages in the description of this video. But the idea here is that if you have some packages that are if you're using actually some packages that are already uh, in the deployment package of your Lambda function, you can specify them in the dev dependencies of your package JSON. In this way, you can still run the code locally, but while but when you publish the code into the AWS environment, they're not gonna pull it. So you're not gonna uh, affect the deployment sites of your Lambda function. Four factor is tuning memory and CPU of your Lambda function. So AWS Lambda provides memory ranges from 128 megabyte to 3008 megabyte. The idea here is that you can only change the RAM allocated to the Lambda function, but what is going to happen under the hood is that AWS will also increase the CPU dedicated to the Lambda function. So the question we need to answer is that how we can balance the memory allocated to our Lambda function and the execution time. So as we know, uh, the costs depend on the execution time, but also on the memory allocation. The more memory you allocate to the Lambda function, the more expensive is going to be the one millisecond execution time granularity. So if we need to reduce our uh, Lambda execution times, it could make sense to add more memory and CPU, but this depends on the type of Lambda function that you are executing. If your application leads more toward to CPU intensive tasks, it could, you could actually see a huge improvement when you allocate more memory and CPU. Whereas on the other hand, if your Lambda function is just uh, calls third party services, even if you increase the memory, it's not gonna change a lot the execution time because it's affected from external services. So sometimes you will see that uh, increasing in memory and CPU will reduce a lot the execution time, but some other times you will see that it's not gonna change too much. So it's going to happen that you're going to pay more for having like a slightly faster function. The only way to do to understand the right um, amount of memory you want to use is by trial and error. So before you decide the different values of RAM that you want to allocate to the Lambda function, you need to test different payloads and different use cases. I also found um, an open source package called AWS Lambda Power Tuning. I'm going to leave the link in the description that lets you try your Lambda function with different configuration in terms of memory allocated. So you can use that in order to see how much it changes and it will also show you the pricing that you're gonna pay. So again, depending on the task that your Lambda function is executing, it may be worth or it may be not be worth to uh, increase the memory of your Lambda function. The last item is Lambda provision concurrency. There are two types of concurrency available in the Lambda function. The first one is reserved concurrency and the other one is provision concurrency. 
Let's quickly explain what is the reserve concurrency, even though it's not useful to reduce the execution time. So by default, you have 1000 functions per region available. So if you hit this um, limit, other functions are not able to run in the same region. What you're going to do with the reserve concurrency value is that you basically reserve concurrency for that particular function and no other functions can use that concurrency. This is a free feature, it's uh, free of charge, so you can use it wisely depending on your use case. Now let's move on and see the actual provision concurrency, which is actually going to help us to reduce the execution time of our Lambda function. So the provisions concurrency initializes a requested number of execution environments so they are like ready to be uh, available when you need your lambda function to run the idea here is that if we go back to the first point which is reuse the execution environment is that aws will basically warm up the function for us in order to avoid a, a call start what is a call start when your function is not being used for some time or when it needs to scale up or when you update your function lambda creates new executions environments. This causes a portion of requests to be uh, slow because they need to download the new code or initialize a new execution environment. By allocating uh, the provision concurrency before an increase in invocation, you can ensure that basically these requests are served with low latency as well. So you can understand that based on your use case, you can maybe set, I don't know, a 50 or 100 provision concurrency. You always have that execution environment ready for you to uh, run the function. All right, guys, I hope this video was useful. I understand that some of the factors that we have analyzed maybe um, need a dedicated video because of quite advanced uh, concepts. But again, I hope it was useful and thanks again for watching.